I'm Chelsea Rose. I'm a historical archaeologist at Southern Oregon University, and I am here in the vaults of the Oregon Historical Society to take a deep dive into Oregon history. So I am here today to research the history of the Oregon and California Railroad. It was no easy feat to get from Portland in 1872 down to connect to California, and that's the story I'm interested in today. From Roseburg south, there was a lot of complexities to building this railroad. The Oregon and California Railroad hired John Quincy Adams Hurlbert, a Canadian surveyor, and with a dozen men, he spent several months surveying the route from Roseburg all the way to the California border. Now, he came up with a variety of routes through this area, and these were based on several different calculations. We are so lucky that here at the Oregon Historical Society, we have one of the notebooks from this work. Basically, we can walk in the footsteps of this original surveying team to look at the different routes that they proposed, how they came up with that data. They came up with two proposed routes, and the Buck Rock Tunnel route was the one that was chosen. So this little notebook here belonged to the Canadian surveyor John Quincy Adams Hurlbert and was used on his 1881-1882 survey work from Roseburg south to the California border. This is a really cool document in and of itself, but what I really love about it is it allows me to to get to know the man behind this notebook a little better. Some of the other things in here is just the mathematics and some of the um, the actual survey calculations that went into determining what would be the best routes. This was really sophisticated engineering and surveying with, you know, pretty primitive tools that they had access to in the late 19th century. One of my favorite pages in here is actually a map of some of these proposed routes that shows the state line up here we have Oregon, down here we have California, and this shows how much these routes varied. One of the places we've done most of the work is the Buck Rock Tunnel. It was two-thirds completed. We have a lot of the calculations about this tunnel. When you look at this map, it's easy to forget how complicated this would have been to get through. The Siskiyou Mountains are really unique landforms because they are the point where so many different mountain ranges converge. We were interested in how they made decisions to put in these tunnels. They made really smart choices um, in where to put these tunnel features on this landscape. But the cool thing is you can take these numbers and you could walk out and stand in the exact spot that this survey crew was at the time and walk these, these potential routes. Our work on the Buck Rock Tunnel site and the Oregon and California Railroad in general is part of the Oregon Chinese Diaspora Project, which is a multi-agency partnership between SOU, uh, the BLM, Forest Service, Oregon State Parks, amongst others, including OHS. And the goal is to research and promote the education of the early Chinese history in Oregon and the contributions that this population made to the state. When we first started this project with the BLM in 2016, we had our work cut out for us to try to orient ourselves on this mountain-sized archaeological site to see not only where the tunnels were, which we knew, but where the domestic sites associated with that railroad construction were located. Where were people sleeping? Where were they cooking meals? How were supplies coming in and out and people coming in and out to this area, this really remote area on this mountain? It's still really remote today. One of our goals is to get at the people behind this big project. And a lot of those people were Chinese immigrants to Oregon. We're not sure exactly how many folks worked on this project, but we do know that it was under construction from the summer of 1883 to the winter of 1884. A lot of the Chinese railroad workers, they were paid better wages than they might have been from other types of industries, such as agriculture. However, railroad work was not a guarantee, it was unstable, it was certainly more dangerous, and they didn't always have the same rights as non-Chinese immigrant populations or Americans that were also working on this railroad. And so we're really interested in what was the quality of life out there? What made this worth it? You know, what other opportunities were they giving up to do this work and how were they treated? We just want to know what daily life was like for these railroad workers. This is an underrepresented and a misrepresented population in Oregon, and they are important to the history of the state. This is Oregon history, and so we want to use the opportunities and the archaeology and the collections here at the Oregon Historical Society to kind of piece this all together to tell this story the best we can. Mm -hmm. 